to Season 2, Episode 11 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing Irigan Playhouse's production of Ring of Fire, the music of Johnny Cash, created by Richard Maltby Jr., conceived by William Mead, and directed and choreographed by Sherry Lutkin, with her husband David M. Lutkin as musical director and one of the cast members. When Ring of Fire opened on Broadway in 2006, it opened in the wake of the wildly successful and critically praised film Walk the Line. I doubt that Ring of Fire was a rushed product in response to the success of Walk the Line. The timeline doesn't work, especially since Ring of Fire workshopped in Buffalo before Walk the Line was released. But the musical only ran on Broadway for about a month and a half before closing. There are some fair guesses as to why, but I wouldn't be surprised that one of them was that people already got their Johnny Cash fix with Walk the Line. And also, frankly, Walk the Line is the better work. And another is that Ring of Fire doesn't particularly cater to the typical modern Broadway audience. But at Irigan Playhouse, Ring of Fire is exactly the kind of show they excel in and something that will definitely appeal to its community and audience, especially when these shows are helmed by husband and wife team Sherry and David M. Lutkin. Frankly, the Luckin family are the best things going for Iverton Playhouse. I have yet to see a show they've created that I did not at least enjoy. Their forte is in creating family-friendly musicals with a folk and country music focus. Regarding Ring of Fire specifically, the show itself in concept is okay. It's an episodic journey through the first half of his career, presented through reflections of an older Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash. Iverton's version has been abridged, when cross-referencing the Broadway cast album with the songs performed at Ivoryton, there are eight fewer songs, and some songs have been substituted for others, which didn't seem to bother Richard Malpy Jr. all that much. Uh, he was in the audience on opening night and seemed to enjoy the show. And I didn't mind it much either, as the musical does run long. This has to do with Maltby's book, uh, which is generally weak. Like most biographical musicals, we don't stick around long for any of the conflicts that arise throughout the show. Johnny Cash's first marriage, his arrest, his drug use, his socio-political positions are all represented and dealt with in passing scenes and not given deep analysis. And frankly, there's not enough time. There's 30 songs to perform. This is where the luck can shine, and why people will come to see Ring of Fire to celebrate the music of the man in black. Songs like Daddy Sang Bass, Egg Suckin' Dog, and A Boy Named Sue are so much fun, and the arrangements are excellent for the septet of musicians that make up the cast, and they are all musicians. Everyone plays their own instruments throughout, whether it be guitar, banjo, trumpet, drum, auto harp, violin, or fiddle, or anything else. No one is technically given an actual character in the credits, but there are assigned duties to each actor. David M. Lutkin himself plays the older version of Johnny Cash, while Leanva Rideout plays the older June Carter Cash, while Sam Sherwood and Brittany Brooke play younger versions of the couple. All four of them are great, but sometimes it felt like Rideout's voice didn't fit the key that some of the songs were written in, but... She more than made up for it with her fiddle playing. She was fantastic. And Sherwood's tenor doesn't exactly reflect Johnny Cash's deep baritone bass sound, but his acting made up on that end. The standout of the four, though, is Brooke, who really embodied June Carter Cash and even sounded like her. That being said, everyone gets their moment to shine singing lead on various songs. Spiff Wiegand, who recently gave a fantastic performance as Buddy Holly over at Music Theatre of Connecticut, gives another excellent performance with Look at Them Beans, and leads a raucous performance of I've Been Everywhere, though I wouldn't mind if the cast helped the audience to properly clap in time. And Morgan Morse and Nigel D. Robinson both fill their duties with precision and polish. I love Cully Long's set design. It feels like one of Johnny Cash's old television sets. Some of the set pieces look like they were repurposed from Native Gardens, a show they did a few months ago, but I don't mind that. Repurposing old set pieces is a common practice, and if it works, it works, and it really worked. Ring of Fire, though, wouldn't be nearly as delightful as it is without the leadership of Sherry and David M. Lutkin. It's a fully realized vision of Johnny Cash's career, at least the first half. Uh, Like I said, the story is a bit light, but it still is a celebration of one of the most important musical artists of the 20th century, and it is a good time.
But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you're interested in tickets, I'll leave a link in the description. You can support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Ding the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be your good man Charlie Brown over at Legacy Theater. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you at the theater.